Hello and welcome back. I'm Bball Joe and this is a tutorial for Workers and Resources Soviet Republic. Today, factory connections. Welcome back. Let me talk to you about factory connections. You can find them in the infrastructure, connections between factories. These are these little things with the double arrows and the forklift looking things. Now, when you try to place them, you can't place them by themselves. They need to be connected from building A and building B. For simplicity, let's use a warehouse. A warehouse has six entries, uh, five of which are factory connections and one is a road connection. And then there's also a rail line connected to it. If we put down warehouses in the current version, the game will give you auto connections like this. If you don't want them, you can hit control and they will go away. And you can just place a building wherever you want and then you can add the connection later. When you place this building down, um, everything is connected and you can see this is a factory connection and it has two arrows. Technically, it's two directional. Practically, you can only push or pull or neither. Um, this game has active connections and passive connections. What does that mean? An active connection um, actually pushes or pulls from a source. How does that look? Um, warehouses are not active. They're inactive connections. They're passive connections. They will not push or pull. They will just receive and then they hold it and then they will give it back if you pull it. How can you get stuff out of there? For example, connect a food factory, store a lot of crops in here, like so. I'll just fill it up so you see what I mean. And um, we will need some people. We won't need them for long, so we'll just put a couple buildings here. Great. Now if you look here, we did need some power, otherwise this doesn't work, but people will go and work here. Right now, crop says zero. However, if we look over here, this is no longer 100% um, full, which is what we just purchased. If I let this run for just a little bit, this number goes down, the food number goes up. We have workers here, but this warehouse import does not show that anything changes. What does this mean? This food factory is pulling from this warehouse. That's all it's doing, nothing else. It's pulling from this warehouse, but only what it needs. So it looks like it's not actually taking something, but if you look in the warehouse, it's definitely taking something out. So this is a passive building is the warehouse, an active building is the food factory. It will pull food out. Uh, it will pull crops out. However, it's an active building. So once food reaches a certain threshold, it will also push it to the warehouse again. So if I let this run for a little bit, um, we won't see it for a little while. What usually happens is the um, warehouse for the export of the building gets filled first. Once it's full, the overflow gets pushed to the next building that may be a passive building like the warehouse in this case. So we'll let this fill up and I'll show you. This is not completely full, but the food is starting to get pushed in just from here from the overflow. I'm not 100% sure why it's not filling 100%, but this is what happens. So right now this is not changing anymore and everything gets pushed into the warehouse, which is why there is a double arrow in the factory connections. It is to and from. So you only need one um, for any connection. Um, if you add another connection again, if there would be one here, you would not increase your throughput. You don't need it. It's fast enough what the factory connection is doing. Um, and this is for a simple setup. There is a different setup. Now we'll show you that too. Uh, the factory connections, they added um, factory connection crossings because, let's see if this works. This is too long. If it's too long, it means you can't place a connection here. Great. But there's a way to extend this. The forklift factory connection lets you place it really anywhere and the connections that are connected to these can be a lot longer. Just how it works. However, let's put some food, uh, some crops in here. 
Um, just some, we don't need all of it. Let this all get built. If you look at it, this stopped working. But this is full of crops, but nothing is happening. You can see a production here. These factory crossings do not allow direct uh, movement of goods for the factory connections. You need to add forklifts. Just add a forklift garage. We'll add it like this. Um, forklifts will go through the forklift, forklift garage too to do anything. And the forklifts, all you have to do is buy a forklift. These are the vanilla ones. They're not great, but they will work. Um, you need fuel because forklifts are machines and they need fuel to run. And you need to assign what you want to happen. In this case, from here to here, I want you to load really anything and I want you to unload really anything at the food factory. You can specialize this if you want to use different warehouses, but for right now, this is fine. If we start the game again, we will see forklifts go from one side to the other. This one is picking up crops, where this one is picking up food. And that's what they're going to do. They're going to pick up food from here, and they're going to drop off crops here. And as you can see, the factory moves, and this is how you connect longer, ones, uh, longer distances with... Uh, factory connections. I highly recommend you that you get modded forklifts because this one for example does four tons instead of less than one. This one does about two and a half tons. Keep that in mind um, or you need to add a lot of forklifts to make this work. But that's how you extend um, factory connections and you can make these into a large network. You can connect as many forklift garages as you want. Um, as long as you can afford it and you have fuel for it. But all of these also act as um, little forklift crossing connections. So keep that in mind. It's pretty fun to build these and make larger industrial areas. I hope you learned something. Uh, if you did, like and subscribe. If you didn't, let me know what you would like me to cover next. And I hope to see you again next time. Bye!